Hello my friend Stevie B here, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a while since I've made any Synthwave content and I think it's been about a year since I uploaded the How to Write Synthwave for Music Libraries video, uh, which did quite well. And I was thinking it would be fun to showcase some of the amazing free synths that are out there if you're looking to uh, get into this genre without breaking the bank. Because as far as freebies go, uh, the four synths that I'm going to show you today are absolutely awesome and they sound amazing. And using mostly these synths, I came up with something that sounds like this. So thanks for being here. Let's go take a look at this track. So this track is pretty simple. It basically has like a verse and a chorus part and a short intro and breakdown. And the way that I think of it is like, there's five elements. You have like a bass lead synth, which is sort of like this orange stuff at the top. You have like the pads and keys, which are in green, an arpeggiated synth, which is in hot pink, all of the drum stuff in yellow and textural one shots and samples in blue on the bottom here. So five elements. And I actually used a great reference for this track, which I don't always do. And my approach is a little different than Carl Casey's track here, uh, which is called Hackers. Highly recommend going to check this one out. But I wanted to get some ideas going quickly. And mostly I just wanted to test out uh, these four free synths that I'm about to show you and see if I can get something that sounded, you know, uh, roughly in the same ballpark. So the first thing we hear uh, in this intro is basically like a filtered bass lead, some of these one-shot textural samples, and filtered drums, and then we immediately get into our verse section. So let's start at the top. Let me show you what's going on. So the first free uh, synth that I want to talk about here is the Tyrell N6 from Yuhi, which you can get from Amazona.de. I think there's also some sound sets that you can download from Amazona. You might want to check that out. When I installed it, uh, it, you know, it comes with a limited amount of presets, but there's some great presets here. I'm using one called Electrostab, and on its own, it sounds like this. So that's basically the bass line for uh, the verse section. And there's a chorus bass line that sounds like this. Okay, so I basically copied that bass part uh, and put it into the next synth that I want to talk about, which is the uh, Tal Noisemaker. So the Tal Noisemaker, the, or the T-A-L, whatever, is got to be one of my favorites. Uh, there's just so many usable patches. I'm pretty sure that I could have made a great track just using this synth alone. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of coverage. Uh, on other videos. I'm sure you've probably heard of it already. But if you don't have this in your arsenal, I'd highly recommend grabbing it. So like I said, just feeding that same bass line from the Tyrell into uh, a bass patch here, which is called uh, Narziger, which sounds like this. So a little bit more of a saw vibe to it. And to beef up this bass sound a little, I did use uh, a couple of serum patches. And one is doing like a pulse bass. And the other is following the, the bass lead. Okay, so not absolutely everything in this session is uh, is a freebie. Don't get mad at me. But with regards to Serum, it's just such a great investment. And there is so many great Synthwave presets for Serum uh, on Splice. If you're a Splice user, make sure to go check that out. Okay, so next, let's talk about these pads and keys. Everything in green here is essentially doing the same thing. And I came up with the part using a different patch from the Noisemaker. This patch is called uh, Dream of 86, which just sounds awesome. And that is being copied into a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so below that, we've got the GR8, which is also another great freebie. And this is a lead patch just called 80s combined with a noisemaker.
Uh, also, a lot of great presets on this synth. Um, this is from Future Tone. Go check out Future Tone's website. Lots of lead patches, lots of pads, some sound effects stuff. I actually should have used this synth more in this track. There is so much usable stuff in these presets alone, but I was sort of trying to keep the track just simple and not like piling too much. And what you're hearing right now is the chorus section. So I kind of wanted to elevate this part. So I added a few uh, noisemaker patches to kind of flesh this synth part out. So we have a patch here called Big Synth. So that's adding some shine on the top of everything. Underneath that, another pad patch called Light Storm. Which isn't adding a whole lot to uh, the equation, but on its own. And underneath this, I got another GR8 patch, which I've labeled wrong. Let me just rewrite that. And this is a lead patch called Classic Trance, which sounds like this. Now that sounds pretty gritty. Um, and the sketch cassette is having a big impact on the level of saturation that you're hearing and tape wobble. So those five patches all together. So it's kind of like a lead synth part, but also has like a pad effect to it as well. Now I kind of wanted to lean into uh, 80s racing game vibes. And this one particular patch from uh, the Tyrell, which is called Moog-like, was perfect for creating that like fast ARP. <laughs> And this isn't an ARP patch. Um, it's kind of a lead patch, but I just drew in the MIDI. And as you can see, it kind of like has this crescendo thing towards the end. And I'm kind of tucking this uh, low in the mix. It's there, but, but I'm trying to stay out of the way of the lead synth patches, but it does add a lot of subtle movement to the mix, which I think is super cool. For the drums, uh, leaning on the Beatmaker Vice, and this is a really cool little VST from U-Jam, perfect for writing synthwave drums, tons of different presets, and there's also loops that you can use as well. And, you know, usually, especially when I'm working on like hip hop tracks, I put so much work into the beat. And with synthwave, it's kind of like the opposite, at least in this track it was. This is just like a really simple, repetitive beat that I try not to overthink. So the main beat sounds like this. There's really nothing to it. I also have a snare sample that I got from Splice here. Going through a lot of reverb. There's some toms, which are also from the Vice kit. Uh, there's this really long verby clap. And we also have some loops that are texturizing the beat underneath that. Now, uh, all of this is going into a drums group, which is being compressed uh, using the Volf compressor. I noticed somebody recently commented on my last Synthwave video saying that I didn't have enough uh, reverb on my snare. Well, <laughs> I hope you're happy now. I don't think you need to wash uh, your, your snare and reverb necessarily for all uh, you know varieties of Synthwave, but in this case, I think it kind of works. Just a quick interruption to let you know that I do have a course on writing, mixing, and mastering Synthwave available on productionmusicacademy.com. In this course, I write an original track from scratch. You see my entire process every step of the way, including all of the mixing and mastering. In the course, we also take a look at one of my best performing synthwave tracks on Motion Array, which is called Lotus 89. And the course also comes with a sample and MIDI pack. Uh, so make sure to go check that out if you're interested in learning how to write synthwave for music libraries and licensing opportunities. I'll put that link in the description below, up top as well. And uh, we've got over a dozen genre-based composing courses on the Academy at the moment. Not to mention an amazing community of like-minded media composers and artists uh, from all over the world that you can network with. Uh, you can get feedback on your work and join the monthly challenges. I'd love to have you in there. And underneath all of this drum stuff, I am using some samples to texturize the track, add a little ear candy. We've got the synth shot, vocal shot, putting that through a lot of reverb with a very long decay and using the kickstart to kind of bounce it. Using this guitar ping sample, which is pretty subtle in the mix. That's from the Ava Aurora uh, sample kit. That's a trailer uh, library sample pack, actually. And yeah, some like cymbal swells, uh, some white noise. Ooh. 
just some basic transition stuff that, you know, same stuff I use in a lot of different tracks. And I just realized that I totally didn't even get around to using the Yuhi's Zebralette in this track. Let me pull that up here. There is some great patches uh, with the Zebralette. I wish I had more time to work on this track. I totally would have gotten into this a little more. This one's called The Grand Entrance. <laughs> Dream Polly. Beautiful. This patch called Zombie Movie Score is insane. Super trippy. I think that the ideas for Synthwave can be, you know, they can be dead simple. It's really just a matter of uh, processing and making it sound uh, 80s. And there's a lot of different directions that you can go there. You could have things sounding more modern, or you could really lean into uh, a very retro lo-fi vibe. In terms of my processing, you know, a lot of delay, a lot of compression, using the sketch cassette to put it into that lo-fi territory, using the decapitator to add a lot of saturation. But overall, the idea is, you know, really, really simple. So that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you're interested in learning more about music licensing, uh, researching and applying to music libraries, I've got a completely free course uh, for you to get started on that journey. There is a link to that in the description of this video. Go check that out. Uh, hit me up and let me know what you thought of today's video in the comments below. Hit that like button for me if you enjoy the video. And please, by all means, subscribe to the channel and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.